Enjoy the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another awesome episode of Movie Guys Podcast. Tonight, we're doing a little bit of a special episode, something a little bit different. We're not going to review a movie. We're going to review multiple movies. If you downloaded this episode, then you know that we're talking about everything Stephen King. Oh, boy, do I have a lot to talk about, but I am Jordan along here with Eric and Ed. How are you guys doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing all right. Not too bad. Not too bad. There he is. So, so tonight we're going to talk about everything Stephen King. All the books, all the movies, everything that we kind of know about Stephen King, of course, in preparation for our review of It, which is the technical title, It, Part 1, The Losers Club, because they'll be doing Part 2 filming next year. So I'm excited to talk about it of course uh you guys are stoked to see this movie i'm assuming right because i'm excited i i wasn't at first but now i am like people are really saying like this is like this surpassed a lot of their expectations so there's a little bit of hype i try not to let the hype build up to me but it's undeniable um they had it wrong before with the shithouse uh on ghostbusters and ended up liking ghostbusters but Mm -hmm. but we'll we'll see it they also chris didn't like waterboy they like waterboy a lot too so Ed, are you stoked? Yeah, I mean, the, the original movie itself is a classic, but apparently they're making this one closer to the original design. The, you know, the, well, I guess you could talk, call it the book like an idiot. But, um, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm excited for it. Yeah. With any Stephen King, though, that's, is that the apprehension? Is that this is not, uh, or. The, Actually, any anything that throws away any of the apprehensions you had, because this is not a uh, Stephen King a- adaptation. This is kind of like a mix now between, while well, you have a a few different things, right? Wasn't there like a there was the the movie with Tim Curry? There was the, obviously the book that came first. Was there other adaptations that mm-hmm. came with it too? Was there like a TV type of thing, or was that movie made for, for TV? It, it it was made for TV. That's what I'm getting the, confused about. The though. Tim Curry movie was a two-night special on, I believe, don't quote me, CBS. Okay. With some Jonathan Brandis, it, too? Yeah. It was, either, it was either CBS or it was either 13. I don't think it was Fox or it was NBC. But this was a big deal. So we're not going to just talk about it, but we will start off, like you guys talked about, with the original with Tim Curry. That was a big deal. There was a point in the late 90s all the way into the late 90s. I'm sorry, in the late 80s to the late 90s, for about a good 10 years, where Stephen King movies weren't really a craze. It was the TV special where they would have these special events, like with Rose Red, with It, with Storm of the Century, uh, the Shining remake or TV movie. They would have these. Uh, the Langoliers, my absolute favorite Stephen King story, by the way. Yeah, the Langoliers. Go. And also uh, the yeah. stand as well. So, Bag of Bones. Bag of Bones was one, right? I don't think that was a TV show. Was it, or maybe it was a movie. I don't know. The stand? It was a book. Yeah, I think uh, Pierce, Brosnan was, Pierce Brosnan was in it. I think the one with. Yeah, the stand with Gary Sinise. I think that was a TV uh, made for TV yes. movie. That was a a three-night TV movie special. So, besides Shawshank Redemption, we have not reviewed the new It movie yet. That'll be next episode. But, besides Shawshank Redemption, guys, a little bit of hype here. Do you think that this new version of It is going to be the best Stephen King movie that we've ever gotten since we've reviewed one of his movies already this year, Dark Tower? Well, I mean, I think we should save our, our thoughts on that until we actually see the movie. This is hype buildup in a way, though. I mean, like, is this going to be the best, do you think, out of all the ones that we've seen? Well, well like, I mean, <laughs> that's of all opinion. the ones we've seen, like, Misery, yeah, yeah, Misery is great. The Green Mile is incredible. I love The Secret Window. 
you know, so it's going to be hard. Cujo, you know, Carrie. Christine, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard like to say Christine is this going to be. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be hard to say whether or not, without actually seeing it, whether or not this is the greatest one. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm just going to hype it up and say that this is going to be the greatest Stephen King, Stephen King movie uh, that we've gotten so far. Jeez, That's my hype eggs with Eggs in the basket there. I like 1408, too. Like, a lot of Stephen yeah. King does a lot of good material that translates well in, into movies. Sometimes it doesn't, though. You know, like, sometimes, it, like, I didn't like Dreamcatcher as a movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Oh, good point. Yeah, Dreamcatcher is pretty bad. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. So I, I didn't I didn't like that. Uh, uh, I think there was some. Uh, I'm like I had the list like just of everything up right now. Oh well, I mean Pet Cemetery wasn't my favorite. Well, Pet Cemetery, I yeah, love and, Pet Cemetery. Yeah, well, that's we've yeah, we've that's also determined that problem. dark the Dark Tower was Stephen King's greatest work, but it was a horrible film. Like that one didn't adapt adapt well. Uh, Ed, I'm sorry, I'm gonna. I have to ignore you for just one second. Eric, did you just say that Stephen King shit? I mean, that 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 that, that Pet Cemetery was shit? I'm not a fan of Pet Cemetery. Oh, oh we're going to fight. Okay. I'm not a, I like I'm not saying that it's it's not it's not for me. And apparently I, I don't know. I have not read the the uh, the book I, I had attempted to, but then my mom had stopped me for some fucking reason. Uh um Probably because, because you would have killed yourself in your sleep. I thought I was probably reading at an age where I thought I was older than I was or trying to be. And she's just like, no, you're not ready for this. I was like, well, I'm going to watch MTV wow. and read this. I, I don't know. My, my mom tried to keep away a lot away from me. But um, well, Steven, wow. Okay, Pet Cemetery is like like one of the top, man. I mean, Pet Cemetery is, is great. Well, like as wow. far as is the – I don't know. Like uh, – um, they're just it didn't really strike a chord with me. I d I don't know why. Maybe I, I didn't like it. But like there's a few things that I did like I liked Apt Pupil a lot, uh, with Brad Renfro and uh Ian McKellen. That was a really good one too. I I I liked that one a lot. So that's nice. so that's gotcha. that's uh, that's one right there, Apt Pupil about the Nazis. <laughs> that's true. So, okay guys, here's some other questions I had uh for our for episode here. This might be a tough one. What is it about Stephen King that we just love? I mean, the name itself sells, right? If you put Stephen King Presents or a Stephen King this, he's going to have a mass audience to go check out his shit. What is it about Stephen King that we as... I mean, is it is the story's really that good? Or is it just the stigma that, hey, this guy's good? I think it's characters. Like it, the the situation is in itself something that can be. You can make a scary situation out of a lot of anything, basically. Like that's just almost life, kind of going through that. But I think that it's because of his character writing. I think that uh, um, it shines out a little bit more. Where you have like uh, 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 people like the Torrances, I guess in in. Um, The Shining, right? Uh, or sure. the or the Gypsies in Thinner, um, kind of, or even uh, uh, Andy Dufresne in Shawshank, you know, or the or just mm -hmm. a, Innocence, a four a four kids walking on a railroad track in Stand by Me, I'm trying to looking for a dead body. So he he gets. All around, he's got you know uh, the innocence uh, of kids. He's got like uh, the good-heartedness in the Green Mile. Uh, he's got the absolute evil and misery. You know, he's just got uh, uh, kind of a, just a weird little bit. Of the, the change that kind of comes in like uh, 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 Firestarter, you know, and just like kind of things like that, where where there's a lot of growth that kind of comes. So he, he does a lot with his characters. And I think that that's what it is, is that no matter what it is, because it's on a huge range, I think you still get the same source. The same, gotcha. Ed, same structure. what do you think about any of that? Well, I mean, I think it's exactly right. I mean, Stephen King is, for all intents and purposes, you know, one of the most recognizable writers, uh, you know, of uh, ever in, in that regard. I mean, I'm, I, I admittedly, I'm not the biggest fan of, of fiction. Uh, you know, and in the sense that, like, I don't read a whole lot for entertainment. I more focus on film and television for entertainment. Uh, and, you know, I've been 
I mean, in grad school, so most of my reading goes to, to that stuff. So, like, and it has forever. So, I mean, because his, his characters are so beautifully presented, people that are filmmakers want to present them. You know, it's, you know, they want to present them physically, or excuse me, you know, in a, in a vi- visually rather than in terms of uh, in your imagination. So, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's a great point. That's why he, everything that he writes becomes, I, I, don't, I don't know that he's ever written a book that wasn't a, it's not a movie. I don't know. Maybe he hasn't. Uh, there was a few. There was a few. Um, especially the disaster that everybody disagrees with me with, but the sequel to The Shining that came out a few years ago, Dr. Sleep. Uh, don't even waste your time on that book. Sequel that was, to The Shining? Yep, it's called Dr. Sleep. Well, all right, then. And since we're talking about Stephen King, guys, and to the audience, I'm not going to get into huge hardcore spoilers of that, but I did read Dr. Sleep because it is the sequel to The Shining, and that book takes place in modern time, and Danny Torrance, the little boy, is all grown up, and he has The Shining, and there's an evil carnival that's going around... Beautiful. All the states yes. that are trying to find people with the Shining so they can suck out their souls so they can get the Shining. What the fuck? That sounds horrible. Yeah. He's an alcoholic like his father. He still has visions of his dead father. And uh, just absolutely horrendous. Also, another one that has been horrendous, one of his most least successful movies has been a few, but one of his major ones recently was with John Cusack and Samuel motherfucking Jackson with cell taint. Wow. I thought that was 1408. No, 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 no. I know. I mean, there's other movie called cell, which is oh. it's, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a zombie apocalypse movie and based off his book cell where uh, your cell phones turn you into Romero zombies, you know, typical zombies. Uh, well, I think he's being thematic there. Well, of course. Yeah. But since we're talking about some stuff that we like and stuff that we didn't like in White King this and White King that, Eric, out of the Stephen King movies, besides Pet Cemetery, since you just said that you didn't like Pet Cemetery, was there one that you're just like, God, I don't really like this a Stephen King movie. This is not a very good movie. Is there one that comes to mind that you're just like not a fan of at all besides Pet Cemetery? <sighs> Um, that's, that's a good one. I, I guess Merce, or, or uh, I'm not sorry, um, uh, what the fuck was I going to say? Uh, uh, Thinner. I, I wasn't really a too big of, of a fan of Thinner, I guess. I, I liked the story and it was fine and everything, but I, it wasn't my, it wasn't my, it wasn't my favorite there. Um, you know, it's funny why you're thinking. Like I said, it's dream, technically dream not a Stephen King one either. Thinner? Well, yeah, Thinner technically... Well, it is... It's his, it's his alias, Richard Bachman. If you ever pick up a book that's written by Richard Bachman, that's Stephen King. He just goes by another name. Uh, Secret Window is not my favorite either, and that's only because... And uh, spoiler for anyone who has not seen Secret Window. This was coming in around a time when I think most movies... It, there really was a trend for this, where most movies were doing the... Uh, uh, the, uh, the twisted or the alternate personality cop out type thing, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, so Fight like, Club made it famous, right? Fight Club did it. Uh, uh, hide and seek. I think there was one with Robert De Niro where he did it, right? Um, uh, yeah. Uh, what's that one with the uh, uh, fucking Michelle Pfeiffer and Harrison Ford? Um, oh, what lies beneath? Yeah, what lies beneath? Like that was a f- f- kind of a weird kind of. Flips there too. Secret Window, obviously, is another one. So it, it was just kind of oh. like he's schizophrenic, and it's just like God, fucking serious, really. And then he's the yeah. devil. Yeah, it, it was. Um, yeah, I, I, I wasn't about it. Like it, it, it was. I was on board for the most part uh, of Secret Window. Like Johnny Depp did a pretty good job with it, but nah, it was whatever. I liked fourteen oh eight a lot, though. I thought that was dope. A lot of people are digging fourteen. 14- no, Ed, 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 do you have one that you think? No, you're not a Stephen King fan, really, per se. But Eric has given some of his opinions. Is there a Stephen King movie that you've seen over the years and just like, no, not good, oh, don't like it? Absolutely, like uh, the Lawnmower Man. All right, <laughs> so you get this, like, you get this out of, for you know this mentally disabled guy, and he's a landscaper, and so you, this doctor wants to put him on 
wants to put him on pills and hook him up to a computer to make him not retarded. And then he becomes like he becomes normal and he comes starts an affair with the ladies and then he realizes like everybody is of him for being retarded and then he wants to kill everybody like that's the lawnmower man um like i hate that story i hate that number one you know that you could think that you could you know i i have a lot of personal problems with that movie that there's no need to get into on, on something like this was it the cgi uh, I mean, the, was it the computer graphics it, it, well but there was it was like 92 or something i don't know what it was but like that is what that I mean, it was tron i mean they use the same stuff they look like tron Tron was sure. way the better than Lawnmower Man, and, oh, and Tron, and Tron was like ten I agree years. With you. Ten years since Junior, right? But it, you could tell that it was like like if we the three of us tried to make Tron at the you know at the same time Tron was coming out. You yeah. know what I mean? No, no, I get you. Because we wouldn't know what to do. Um, you know, I mean, I I disagree. I mean, I, I there's not a ton of bad movies. It's just like you got like in terms of bad stories, you have just bad filmmaking behind it like I, I i make fun of the langoliers like i i love the story of langoliers you like you got these pack these time the eating pac men yeah listen you get a bunch of time eating pac men that you know they, they're on a they're on an airplane and they the ones that are asleep when they land you know are the only people left in society and you got a bunch of time and space eating pac men that they have to run away from like that's retarded I mean, it's a fun kind of movie, and anytime it's on, it's a guilty pleasure movie, or it's, a, or it's like one of those TV movies. I don't remember, you know. But other than that, I mean, like, oh, Maximum Overdrive, huh. really? Yeah. Like that was that's like the quintessential '80s awful horror movie. Like you have a haunted fucking semi truck. The Mangler. Just killing. Yeah, yeah. The Mangler. Just killing people. Uh, well, but I mean, the yeah, I mean, those are the three. I guess if I had to pick. The Long War Man had a sequel. With. A lot of his, a lot of his stories yeah. had sequels. Like that's the other thing too. Is Did that it really? Like, oh yeah. Well, Children of the Corn obviously went to uh, six and, and seven. Seven. Uh, 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 Pet Cemetery had a sequel. Yes. Right. And it was spelled T O O, which was fun. Um. What was hold it really? Hold on, Eric, real quick. Uh, hold on, Eric, real quick before you go on that. Ed, I just want to let you know, my brother. Uh, is a huge Stephen King fan. So he has a bunch of books, so I've been reading some of them over the past few months. The Lawnmower Man movie, this is a fun fact for the show, is nothing like this actual story. Stephen King actually sued the movie studio that made the movie because all they did was literally take the title. There is nothing really? in that movie that has anything to do with yeah. nothing the, the that whole, goes with that. The whole cyber thing, like, is, uh, I don't know. Yeah. See, and that's nothing. it. I didn't, read, I didn't read the book. I just assumed that he tried and failed. No, yeah. No, I had never read the, but, the, no. the books either, but, like, when Lawnmower Man 2 Beyond Cyberspace comes out, and it's like, well, my lawnmower shouldn't have anything to do with being in cyberspace. Right. <laughs> So like, uh, yeah, that's that's basically what it is. But that's not the first yeah. time that that he that Stephen King has done that. He did it with uh, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining too. And then now you have a movie like uh, Room Two Thirty Seven comes out, the documentary about the conspiracy theory around that movie. Right. Which The Shining is still my favorite movie uh, of all time. But uh, what else were we saying? Uh, the oh god, the one continue shit. Lost my train of thought. I had one that we were talking about. Oh yeah, a rape sorry, train sequels. has no brakes. Sorry, sequels. Uh, what about <laughs> what about one sequel that's not bad? Because uh, I don't think it's that terrible. What about the Rage Carry Two? It's not that bad. No, but didn't it come out like a million years later? That was like well, a it, that was a it, that was a date popcorn movie during like yeah. the age of um, Scream. Essentially, it came out in nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, but so I it was those, like the, the the slasher cut 'em up movies were really popular. Yeah, and you know she had a tattoo on her arm, and then when she got all rage filled, her tattoo grew vines. It was yeah, cool. It was it was a it was and a then you get Man, get harpoon gun in the dick. It was fun. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> right, the harpoon. I don't know. I uh, I mean. Yeah. A few few of the movies obviously like hold 
a lot more weight than than the others and it's this is where sure. it kind of it comes out down to it i mean whether it be like a lot of people i know the old generation liked carrie a lot that was like the movie you know uh, or cujo cujo was apparently one of like the one that set kind of a tone for a lot of things almost like that how jaws had set a tone for it you know mm. uh christine did it for me man christine was one of the first scary movies probably the first r-rated movie that i that i've seen man actually uh it was christine just, huh yeah i, I think so because i remember it uh it was just one of those where my for some reason my grandparents had it and it was like <laughs> well like when, as a kid you go to your grandparents house uh, or i went over to my grandparents house and i'm bored as fuck because what the hell do my grandparents have for a kid and yeah sure they had maybe a few different movies and like you know two of them were like some old-fashioned you know uh thigh burner fucking uh, uh tapes and like they had like christine and then they had like two tapes of shit that they just recorded randomly on vcrs i and <laughs> so i'd be like all right well i'll just watch christine and and like they never stopped me they just was like oh he's watching tv good we can just go fuck off doing something else for about an hour and a half so wow i yep. would watch christine and yeah and, oh but well not i wasn't completely deprived here ladies and gentlemen they also had comedy central and it was like a new thing uh yeah back oh, then. yeah and so i got to watch a lot of comedy central like a lot of mystery science theater 2000 like a lot of british tv shows it was great yeah comedy central. like a lot of south park this is like yeah. before all that this is like when they were like trying like taking in comedy extra shit from from british comedy so like i had to yeah. watch like, a lot of absolutely fabulous or like oh Oh, yeah. so you got the good shit. Yeah. yeah. The uh, old school shit. Old whose line is it anyway? Kind of stuff like that too. Oh yeah, though yeah, the old shit before Drew Carey took it over. Yeah. Yeah. Um my first introduction to Stephen King uh was uh Twister. Uh so my dad showed me uh The Shining because we were seeing Twister in nineteen ninety six and I was nine and it's the it's it's when the F four tornado took out the drive through. I mean sorry, took out the uh -huh. drive in. Oh yeah, and and you know it was the scene you know where you know Jack is you know here Johnny scene, and I was like, and I asked my dad in the theater, I was like, is that an actual movie? And he goes, yeah, it's called The Shining. I'll I'll show it to you after Twister. And I was like, okay, huh. it, you know, because you don't show a nine year old The Shining because it's to a to a nine year old it's so b boring. Um, you know, but uh, did um... loved it. Love it now. But back then, did he do Salem's Lot? Salem's Lot was also a big one. So, so he had uh, his uh, the first movie for Stephen King also was his first book, which was Carrie. And then his second <laughs> movie, which also was his second book, was Salem's Lot, which I believe was a TV movie directed by Brian De Palma. Oh, there it is. That's what I'm trying to think. It's like I'm trying to find it. Salem's Lot, yeah. Wow. Wow, from 1979, based on his 1975 novel. Yeah. Yes. By the way, you guys ever see the remake of uh, Salem's Lot? I think starring Rob Lowe. No, I didn't even know there was one. So I, I, I think there's a Rob Lowe remake. Definitely got to check that one out. One. Um, oh, God. Have, have you guys seen uh, one of his most recent movies in the past uh, 15 years that's been really good? My wife and I really love this movie. Uh, it's called The Mist. Have you guys seen The Mist yet? Yeah. I, like, it's, listen, it, it's good. I, I, I can't, it's one It's one of those where the uh, um, the lady, oh, what the hell's her name? The uh, crazy church lady? Yeah, or? The, yeah, yeah. She's, she's, she's got a three-piece name, doesn't she? Marsha Gay Harden. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she does, she's, Marcia Gay Harden is a fantastic actress. Like, let that be known, obviously, right here. She's, she's just a great actress. And she did so well in this movie that I fucking hated her for it. And I was like, I don't, I, I don't, I don't like this movie. Like, there's a few, you know what I'm talking about? Like, few parts, or a few characters, you'd be like, man, I fucking hate you so much, man, that I just, like, I completely turned turn off. Like, this is one, the purple kangaroo in Horton Hears a Who, like, that was another one. Where I just, I just fucking hated it. I hated that character. Yeah, I and I was like, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Joffrey was probably a lot for a lot in Game of Thrones. <laughs> Joffrey, I'm assuming, is that blonde hair fucker that got poisoned? Spoiler, but yeah. Spoiler alert, yeah. 
That was like season two, right? It was like it was later. Yeah, but still. That was like 20 years ago, so it's fine. It's cool. Hey, at least I know something. Good for you. you yeah. I need to give you my HBO Go account so you can watch it. I don't need your HBO Go account. I have HBO now. So, anyhow. By the way, yeah. speaking of The Mist, there were three people in that movie that are in The Walking Dead. Yeah, I know the main chick. And uh, really, who else besides the main chick? Uh, the uh, Melissa McBride is in it. And uh, uh, the guy who played the dude with the uh, – who plays Carol. And the dude who played the – I forget what the hell is his name with the camper. Oh, okay. Um, the old guy. The old guy uh, with the Yeah, Jeffrey hat. DeMunn, whatever yeah. the hell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was in it. He's in it too. Uh, but, of course, after – after I saw The Shining, uh, I got into uh, Stephen King's It. Stephen King's It was my second Stephen King movie that I saw. And, man, did that movie have an impression on me. Uh, I never watched part two of the original TV movie with Tim Curry because part one was just – it came out when I was those kids' age, man. What a great movie that movie was. Part two sucked. So bad. So, well, so how bad. Well, the director said it. Oh, God. <laughs> it sucks He's so having bad a heart attack. He it sucks to, like, so bad. He has to. It has to suck so bad. I mean, like Stephen King's It was a really, really good first part movie. Tim Curry did a good job with that one. Um, there has not been really terrible Stephen King movies, you know. But there's a lot of stuff that Stephen King hates. Like you know, Stephen King hates uh, the Children of the Corn movie, and rightfully so because that is pretty much the same thing as Lawnmower Man. They just took the name of the title the short story that was released in playboy and did something else completely different with it so there's a lot of stuff that they did um with changing his work material however though we didn't talk about firestarter that's another one of his with drew barrymore huh drew barrymore firestarter with that one that was, uh, that and, one, that one was cool that was cool for what it was i mean it was nothing like great but it was cool Ed, do you remember your first Stephen King movie at all that you saw the first time? Or, Well, you know, I, I can't say that there was a, a moment or, or, or any given time that I can remember. I mean, I, I, I have to think it would have been The Shining. My dad probably showed me The Shining probably way earlier than I should have. Actually, you know what? No, I take that back. We're just remembering back having a sleepover at my buddy's house for his birthday. We watched Pet Cemetery, And I remember thinking that this is awful. You know, animals are coming back to fucking life. I remember that now. I do remember that now. So it was it was Pet Cemetery. Yeah. Ray Chow. But uh. like these these uh, uh you know, a lot of his stuff is is so well known that it gets parodied. Like that's how I think that you know that it, it's a it's a great level of how you know that you've made it is when your shit gets parodied. Right? Uh, yeah, like the Mephesto the Mephesto thing in, in South Park. That, that's Pet yes. Cemetery. Don't we'll go that route, that route. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> right? No, no, that guy. Yeah, no, the Mephisto. That was like a Doctor Moreau type, type thing. But no, I don't, they. Yeah, they obviously they. they well, I was um, referring to like that whole episode of when they find when they find oh. him and everything is like yeah whatever yeah yeah <laughs> nice. <laughs> the part where you mean where he buries the pig to re- resurrect butters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where they fake his death by throwing the dead pig off the roof? Yeah. That was probably one of the best episodes. <laughs> <laughs> well, wouldn't they're doing the ninja stuff and they throw a, a, a ninja star in Butters' eye and he goes to the vet? They yeah. take him to the vet and he spends the whole episode crying. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> they get some pretty create, uh, creative episodes there. But, I mean... Uh, yeah, and they they parodied a lot of Stephen King's shit. They parodied Children of the Corn. They parodied Christine. They've parodied they parodied Salem's Lot. But then again, I think everyone has at this point. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, misery. I mean, like yeah. obviously we have misery. Heard... Yes, misery. Thank you. What is what a creepy movie that is, Eric. You're right. Thank you for bringing that it's, up. It's a super creepy movie, and I I'm afraid that like it was one of Stephen King's weird fetishes or fantasies. Because it's basically his life if he were to crash land in Rhode Island. Well, that's when Stephen King got nuts because he also wrote Dark Tower, which we talked about a few weeks ago. And my brother, being a big Stephen King fan, told me by book six and seven, Stephen King himself is in the book playing Stephen King. 
So. Oh my god. But you, but but of course, I don't know if you guys agree with me or not. But the most creepiest scene in Misery is, you know, when she takes the uh, what is it, the uh, sledgehammer in between the, oh, the uh, wooden block and uh, breaks his know, legs again. Legs the, oh the, god. The hobbling oh. scene. Oh. Oh, mm-hmm. that's just terrible. What an Oscar! Right? Something like movies are not really, I don't think, gory and scary. It's just the creepiness about it, right? I mean, that's what makes it so good. Is what goes bump in the night. That's what that's what he hits on on on, on every level. Which I hear it is stereotypical horror, but it has that Stephen King element of. I'm excited. I'm I'm really excited to talk about this one, guys. This could be our greatest episode of the year. So far. well, I, I sure hope so. I I'm, I'm down to go see me a good movie. I'm going to go see Good Time tomorrow with Robert Pattinson. Oh, my brother. By that. the way, I'm not sure if it's a it's an if it's an official marketing thing or I just bought into it and saw it on Facebook. Apparently, there's a there's a thing where they're going around tying red balloons to storm drains in major cities. <laughs> and That's amazing. I don't know if it, again. I don't know if it's part of the marketing for the movie, which if it is, is brilliant. But it's super creepy because, like, remember that remember that time like last year or the year before? It was about a month where people were legitimately going around as clowns killing people. Yeah, I had a friend that uh, his video was the one that went viral for it because he fucking does a whole bunch of clown shit. Like, dude, he's fucking gonna get himself killed. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, yo, that's. You mean your friend did that? Yeah, the, the the main one of the main ones that went viral uh, of him just kind of standing in front of the car wash, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that was him, and uh, yeah, he's, God, he, he made a big deal of it. he got interviewed and stuff like that on on local radio and. Really? Yeah, he made a he made a, <laughs> a big deal, but I was you know people were just like you're gonna get yourself fucking shot, man. Like yeah, like people are you're scared shitless, and especially in Detroit. Like what the fuck are you thinking, man? Yeah, brothers yeah, are scared of clowns. Detroit, <laughs> not Detroit. Well, everybody, we did not want to have a long episode tonight. We just kind of want. Wanted to just do a nice little filler here for you guys. Get hyped up and ready for Stephen King's new movie, It. Uh, like I said, myself personally, this could be the movie of the year for me. I was let down with Alien Covenant. I was also let down with King Kong. We all remember that debacle. So, uh, speaking of that, check out that episode. It's a great movie, man. I don't know why the hell you're hating on it. I rented it on demand a few weeks ago. Uh, that's the third time I've watched it. I've watched it three times now. Once in the theater and twice outside the theater. And I, I still say it's a piece of shit. But... <laughs> But, uh, you know, uh, this has been a great year for us. Um, I just wanted to take this time to say thank you to all the fans. Uh, we have a lot of great shows and a lot of great episodes uh, on our site and also on iTunes and on other networks. We'll get to talk to you in a second. But uh, we just wanted to take this time to say thank you, everybody. And, uh, and we do this for you. So thank you and keep up the downloads. And uh, if you like this episode, make sure to check us out at movieguyspodcast.com. And also another site, which is movieguyspodcast.podbean.com. And also on iTunes, if you search Movie Guys Podcasts and tweet us at Movie Guys Pod. Also, uh, my old show, Podcast, has come back. We released an episode last week talking about old childhood books. And this week, we'll be talking about WCW versus WWF. So check out those episodes as well. And the Game of Thrones special is officially over with for this year. But we'll have more specials coming soon. I'm so sad that you guys are not doing any. I did not know that Game of Thrones only did seven episodes. Oh, when it comes back, we'll, we'll keep it going. Yeah. Right? Two, like, two years from now, expect Movie Guys podcast series finale of Jesus. Game of Thrones. Nice. But we are going to do, you know, I guess, Jordan, we can officially announce it now. Uh, we're going to have another special uh, special series uh, Jordan and I are going to be doing The Walking Dead. Uh, so, you know, we're pretty excited about that. Yes, I'm really excited about it because I hate The Walking Dead now. So um, I, I can't wait to rip it apart. Oh, I hate you. Hooray. Me. So, but thank you so much, guys, for downloading us. And we'll be back again for a full review episode for it. But uh, for Eric and Ed, thank you, thank you so much, guys for joining me. And we'll be back next week again for it. Take care. Have a good night.